conversation. We're going to talk about demeanor, your character. Um, the title is called Men of a Lesser God. And around us, we all see the different examples of men who are broken, men who are astray, men who are weak, uh, feminized, uh, unactualized men. They serve a different master, right? Their master is the, the female deity, the mother goddess. They worship something else, so they operate under a different frequency level. These men are conducting themselves in ways that are foreign to men like you and I. We cannot understand why they operate this way because they are men of a lesser God. That makes sense? Because what they worship is lesser than themselves. And right now, we have to understand that a man is not a man without a discussion on his demeanor. You know, yesterday a woman asked me, she said, I always get this out in Brazil, why are you so serious? My demeanor is so serious, so stoic, right? And she, it, this is something I hear all the time, mostly from women, right? They just don't get it. They, they, they really don't understand. My demeanor is serious because I modeled myself after serious men. I always felt that a man's demeanor should be complicated, hard to read. You shouldn't be a guy that's joking around playing all the time you know keep key because people don't take the jokes too serious the jokester has to have either a lot of money or a lot of muscle to be to be respected right he doesn't have to be people always think they know you that's why it's such a, a balance a imbalance between the comedian and his actual self because he's warring with the reality of people seeing him as entertainment, as he's, his words are only useful to make others laugh and to make people feel good, as opposed to when he has serious ideas, no one is ready to uh, embrace that side of him, right? And as a man, you want to be perceived as serious. You don't want to be perceived as a joke. You don't want people to look at you and think that you're a pushover, right? Too many smiles when they aren't warranted. Trying to be the entertainer of a group, especially women. They don't respect that. Don't try to be nobody's fucking entertainment. Don't make anybody feel comfortable without them earning that comfort in your presence, right? Make people wonder what you're thinking. Make people wonder, ask questions. See that mysterious, that, that question I always get, why are you so serious? That's the mystery. That's the only way to get it, like why? What's, what is, it, it puts question marks in people's minds. And that's perfectly fine. People should never feel comfortable around you. They shouldn't be comfortable enough to crack an ill-hearted joke, somebody that's not close to you. They shouldn't be comfortable enough to ask you for something out of pocket, right? Disrespect you. Even, especially women, they should never feel comfortable doing most things around you. They should feel like they need permission or to know that it's cool. You don't want people to think that you're just a guy that they can run over. Your demeanor, man, your character, your integrity, your, your intelligence. You shouldn't waste words with people, right? Wasting words, talking to hear yourself talk. You understand? Speak when you got something profound to say. Don't just waste words in the air and the ethers because it feels good to hear your own voice. Nah, you should be a man of very few words. And the men that I've always respected were men like that, right? All you see on TV nowadays is a bunch of men talking, running their fucking mouths, gossiping, rumoring, like females, right? Never trust a man who talks too fucking much. That's why I don't trust politicians. They talk too fucking much. All they do is fucking talk. How can you respect the man who only runs his fucking mouth? You talk too fucking much, man. You gotta watch people like that, man. Always remember that. When you open your mouth and you got something to say, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, and then you shut the fuck up and let people deal with whatever reality they got to deal with, right? 
because you done gave them reality. So now they gotta adjust to the to the to the to the transfiguration of their fucking ideas and shit because you just gave them some real power, right? Always speak truth to power. Always keep it close to your heart. Always speak from your sword and your shield, right? And make sure people know when you talk, it's time to listen and shut up. You know, people shouldn't feel comfortable talking over you. And when you do talk with like-minded men, it should be an exchange of ideas, not a pissing contest. Not who's trying to see who's tougher, who's the man. You know, you should be trying to learn when it's time to learn. Everybody can learn from everybody. You can learn from other men. Other men can learn from you. Always be willing and open to know that you know nothing. A wise man knows that he knows nothing. And that he can always acquire more information, right? Don't ever think that you're the end-all, be-all of all knowledge and wisdom. That's insanity. You're not the most high, right? But it's good to be a man of few words, man friend's father, right? This man raised four doctors, eight children, I think a lawyer, you know, he has a very successful outcome of his offspring. Many grandchildren, great grandkids already. And I remember when we were younger, this guy was, he was the gym teacher for our school, and then he worked at a boy's home, a group home, at night, got up, came back to school. I didn't even know when this man slept, right? But he would be quiet, man. He was a quiet dude. He would sit and smoke his pipe. Might have a little comment here and there, a little smirk. You know, we playing sports. He watches, you know, teaches how to do things on the court properly, baseball. But he was quiet. He was like, a, he just like, you know, you watch them coaches in the NFL. They sit there and they watch arms folded, just paying attention to things. That's how his father was. And he didn't really start talking to us like men until we got older. You know what I'm saying? He didn't reserve, he reserved the conversation for us when we were mature men because he wasn't a guy to just sit around and run in his mouth like little kids do, right? When you're young boys, you could just sit around and ramble and talk about nothing. But as we got older, we matured into ourselves. He started to open up to us because now he could talk to other men. You see what I mean? And that's how it's got to be. Nowadays, it's all about instantaneous you want to say buzzwords, you want to say, you know, you want to fit a whole bunch of information into a small 30-second uh, clip. You know, it's all about rumors and talking about who's, whose name is hot right now. And all, That's all you see is men gossiping, gossiping in sports. They gossip in sports more than they talk about sports. They talk about men and their character like women. Watch that stuff, man. Pay attention to that. Just because a group of men talking in a group on TV doesn't mean it's not gossip. You understand? They got little sports channels. I forgot what it's called. It's on YouTube, some bull called the Fumble or something, right? And all it is is talk about what athlete got what chick pregnant, and it's all a bunch of females. A female sports show that's basically gossip about their personal lives, right? And mostly white girls and other chicks talking about black men, right? But this is this is something that you got to really know that as a man, you got to be adverse. You got to be different. You got to be, you know, when people are running their mouths, you should find yourself quiet. Reading the room. Having decorum, right? You shouldn't be out nowhere drunk and belligerent. When people can see that you, you're off your kilt, they can test you, rob you, bring violence your way, right? People think that your sensory is low. You should never be out in the streets, stumble, drunk, too high, too much party. Always be that voice of reality amongst your circle. That's how you be a leader. When everybody's wilding out, and everybody's partying, and everybody's acting crazy, you be the one that's sober and clear. So when decisions got to be made on behalf of your friends, you can be the one in charge. Listen, all right, you're not driving. You're not going here. Let's get up out of here. Pay attention to beefs and dirty looks. Dudes get drunk, start talking to other people's girls, start problems because they're not paying attention. You got to be the one 
that's watching these things, because this shit can mean your life, man. You jumping off the bridge with your friends and all y'all fucked up, that could get one of y'all asses killed. Get y'all thrown in jail. Right? Get you jumped. People leading you, going to places you should go. Some of y'all live in gang territories, bad neighborhoods. You get drunk and want to go to a party on the wrong side of the town. Remember that happened to us when we was younger, man. We got fucked up. We wanted to go just be out. We went to some party on the wrong side of town. My man had some beef we didn't know about. We ended up getting jumped by damn near fucking 15, 20 motherfuckers. Because we go to the wrong hood. My man got problems over some females, some young dumb shit. And we all go into a party not really paying attention to the circumstances. <clears throat> a lot of us got second chances. A lot of us got to make up for our mistakes, right? A lot of us got to survive our mistakes. A lot of people don't survive their mistakes. We gotta, you got to think about the possibility that something can become fatal, right? A fucked up look. The inability to walk away from a conflict. To say, all right, man, you got it. Doesn't mean you pussy. It just means that you know when to fight your battles and when to walk away. It's a time and place for everything. A grown man at some point, you shouldn't be throwing hands with nobody. Everything should be able to be talked out. You understand? Because when it comes to grown men, like I said, conflict can become fatal. A simple shove or fight with the wrong person, you beat the wrong dude ass, he's gonna come back and kill you. So you gotta know when it's, at a certain age, you shouldn't be fighting about nothing. Even if you come in and find your wife fucking another dude in your crib, you should have the mindfulness to know, like, all right, cool. Let me get up out of here so I can go ahead and continue my life and get you out of it, right? You don't go downstairs and get the gun and come up there and start shooting up everybody and now you in jail for life. Because you can't control yourself. You just be a man of calm demeanor. Never let nobody see you on tape. Even when shit is crazy. You should be able to stand and analyze things. That's the sign of a warrior, man. Never getting rattled. Never getting thrown off a square. Never getting too excited about nothing. Even if it's inside you. You're crazy about something. Maybe certain things in your personal family, your birth of a child, you know, things like that. But everything else in the world, you gotta keep your mind very focused and very keen on delivering a certain image, a projection of yourself, so that people don't think that they can fuck with you. People don't think that they can talk to you certain ways. When you keep yourself serious, people don't know what to do with you. Whether that's at work, whether that's with your relationships, your friends, your family. It's cool to joke around, but it's a time and a place for everything. And everybody don't get to see that side of you, right? Because other people that don't love you are going to use that as a weakness. That's why you don't be that little class clown motherfucker. Nobody respects him, right? Unless he's making money. You don't be no class clown. Don't be walking around trying to crack jokes and make everybody feel good. Nobody likes that motherfucker. Especially when people are not in the mood for it. You be at work, the one that dude who think he's funny always trying to crack jokes when he's around the girls. Nobody likes that guy. Because he comes a dive and does it. Because that's most men's default mechanism when it comes to being around women is to immediately turn into an entertainer. Right? To immediately default into lessening himself lessening his masculinity turning it down so people feel comfortable so you think that makes you more attractive because you the funny guy ha ha right but that makes you just more of a carbon copy of another hundred thousand dudes you're not making yourself special the guy who stands in the corner in a room full of women and can still keep his composure quiet cool and calm that's the guy they're whispering about what's up with this guy why is you so serious? And that's what you're going to get. That's how women are going to come at you. They're going to be like, why are you so serious? Why are you not smiling? What's up? That's the only way to know how to approach you because you're like a fucking puzzle. Right? That's her way of trying to get in your cipher. 
and see what's up. Because he's track, she's attracted to that. Oh, this guy's different. This is this is a sign of masculinity right here. That's what she's saying. That quiet, serious guy has a lot of signs of masculinity, especially in the era of the effeminized man, right? Especially in this era where most men are feminine and weak and kowtow to females. For you to be able to maintain and be constructively masculine in any situation will always, I promise you, always give you the ability to govern situations around you. Even if you're not the leader, you're just the guy that people are following because you look like you're in control. When people start panicking or people need answers, they're going to go to the guy whose ears are turning. I remember, I'll never forget this. I was one time I was sitting in the cafeteria, man, back in the day. And I'll never forget, I always kept this demeanor about me. Even when I didn't realize I was doing it, I sat one day and one of the gym teachers came up to me. And somebody was like, why are you so quiet? What's you so serious about? And the gym teacher overheard it. And he's like, that's why, that's, that's because the gears are turning. It's a good thing. Gears are turning. Answer the question for me. So people, when they see that, they assume there's intelligence going on, right? Because the guy who's constantly running his mouth, constantly jumping off at the gyms, trying to talk, 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 he's masking his lack of information, right? Because usually over a while, you realize he's saying a whole lot of nothing. But the guy who's quiet, he's showing signs that intelligence is actively taking place in real time. He's having thoughts. See what I mean? These are things that need to be taught to your sons. He needs to be taught to think like a warlord. I haven't met many warlords in my life, but I understand that a warlord had to carry himself a certain way, an emperor, a king, a ruler. He has to be a man of his words. He has to choose his words wise. These are things you got to teach your boys, right? Because the, the real mode right now for thinking, man, if you have a son, is to teach your son how to interact when he deals with one of these 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 broken boys raised by one of these witches right and all he's going to want to do is act out on his mother's kill order and destroy him right he's a limiting he's a living embodiment of the violence that his mother holds in her heart for you that's why he kills his brother like that that's why he murders his brother with no thought you have to teach your sons how to navigate and weave in and out of that it's a skill it's a skill to be a man. It's a skill to be a man of knowing, and of understanding, and of wisdom. And you have to carry yourself like that. Because everywhere you go, everywhere you look, someone's trying to tear down or rewrite or remaster or re-image you to the world before you can represent yourself for yourself. So people can see you as who you are. And it's sad, man. You know, people will look at you and expect certain actions out of you. But when you act with a high-level demeanor, I'm talking about a man of gentlemanly, kingly, regal, a regal air attitude about you, people don't know what to do with you. That's cool to be a man, a thinker, a man who puts his thoughts together before he, he speaks before he utters that's why sometimes it takes me a long time to make these videos because for me to be able to conduct an idea for an extended amount of time and stay on topic it's not easy so I ha it takes me days and days and days to just go over it in my mind to constantly think about it to get my points together so that I can have an idea that's coherent and sharp and makes sense this is something, a skill that I've developed over my lifetime. To be able to conduce or conduct a conversation, a monologue for you guys. It's not easy. 
But I look at men like Jim Brown, right? This is a man that I modeled myself after. After I seen him in movies and I watched interviews by him. And when I got older, it was like I was finding myself. But I knew that I was I had a certain personality, a certain characteristic. But I didn't have a, a template. But once I started to see how Jim Brown carried himself, a man of thought, a man of understanding, a man of strength, a man of few words, but spoke his intentions. I knew right then and there that I wanted to be like that man. So I started to talk less. I started to joke around less. The class clown demeanor in me died. The guy who always wanted to be the entertainer, he passed away, he was gone. And I became a more serious version of myself. And once I became a more serious version of myself, people started to take me serious. I started to get more respect. I started to be able to move and navigate in certain places that I couldn't before. It's okay for you to be a man with a sense of humor. That's one of our gifts that God gave us. But it's also, it's also your responsibility to know when to hide that. You know what I'm saying? To know when to keep that to yourself. Because you don't get too many opportunities to show people who you are, to make a first impression. And I like my first impression to be mysterious. I like people to not know what's on my mind. I don't like them to have an idea who I am and think they'd be able to break me down or, you know, come up with an answer about what type of guy I am. I like them to ask questions. Why are you like this? Why? Because think about it. A guy who exposes himself at all times, runs his mouth, tells his feelings, let people know what's on his mind at all times. No one has any questions about you. There's no curiosity there. See, but everywhere I go, I can draw up curiosity because people want to know why I am the way I am. And that's strength. And when you're dealing with women, that also equates into attractions. So you might have to learn how to think find someone that you you look up to a man that you would model yourself after and look at his characteristics his traits and try to mirror that there's nothing wrong with doing that that's what men are supposed to do you understand if you find a guy a man that you think in past history or present or whatever and you feel like he has common traits and things that fit your personality but he seems to have mastered them because he may be older than you it's all right to take pieces and add them to yourself so that you can become the man that you feel that you should be, right? Whether it's, and it doesn't matter it was Marlon Brando or fucking whoever, Jim Brown for me, right? Whoever you think it is, Bruce Lee, all these great men that have come and gone, Malcolm X, Whoever you think it is, just find, maybe it's somebody in your neighborhood, a mentor, someone you've met along the way, a musician, somebody. Find somebody in a positive light to mimic because all these kids know is because their mothers don't teach them the value of mentorship of a man. So they, they follow and mimic the wicked, evil motherfuckers in the ghetto. They want to be like the worst dudes, but they don't understand the value in, in taking pieces from some of the best men you ever met and building your character to make yourself great. Right? It might be someone in your field of expertise or someone who just feels like his character is just cool. And that's how you want people to see you because that's how people see him. It might be Denzel Washington or someone you think is cool and has the right words to say, has a great demeanor. 